Welcome to Valley View Baptist Church and welcome to our YouTube uh, visitors from around the, around the globe. We're delighted uh, to have you. And uh, as always, we're speaking of our abundantly able God, referencing uh, Ephesians 3, 20 and 21. We must remember that faith defeats fear. Faith defeats stress. Faith defeats anxiety. Faith <coughs> defeats discouragement. Faith defeats depression. Yes, God's still in the miracle business. Yes, God is still on his throne. Yes, God is still all-knowing, all-powerful, everywhere present at the same time. So with that, that thought in mind, Let's just look to the Lord. Heavenly Father, as we come before you now, we just ask, Lord, that you'd guide every word that I speak. Take total control, uh, Lord, and just, uh, uh, we just pray that uh, you'd bless the message and that each one of us that hear it will apply it uh, to our to our walk with you. So Lord, just thank you that we can be together and share together your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I wanted to share a couple short things with you uh, before I give my message. And it's uh, uh, R.A. Torrey uh, wrote this in a Christian a newspaper. It says, a religion of four letters. A friend of mine once said to another who was seeking peace by doing, you have a religion of two letters. My religion is a religion of four letters. How is that? asked the other. Your religion is do, D-O. My religion is done, D-O-N-E. You're trying to rest in what you do. I'm resting and what Christ has done. Amen. Isn't that good? Amen for that. It says another one by uh, August Van Ryan said, it's following Christ, not easy, but right. It's not always easy to follow the Lord. Jesus said that the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither is he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If they persecuted him, they will persecute us. If they have kept his, if they have kept his sayings, they will keep ours also. Even though the path is sometimes unpleasant, praise his name. It is the right path. Otherwise, he would not have to take it. It leads to glory. Our Lord triumphs over all the powers of evil. He dares to lead his sheep through a wilderness where howling wolves roam, yet never will he lose one who has trusted him. It pays to follow close behind, to be where we may keep our eyes fixed on him. Then we shall be winning victories. We shall be overcomers rather than overcome. Pretty interesting uh, thoughts. And then this I wanted to share with you. I don't know who wrote it, but have you thought about your soul? Have you ever stopped to wonder what this life is all about? Why you're here and where you're going when your lease on time runs out? Maybe you've been far too busy trying hard to reach your goal. Would you let me ask you kindly, have you thought about your soul? If you've never thought it over, spend a little time today. There is nothing more important that will ever come your way than the joy of sins forgiven and to know you've been made whole. In the name of Christ the Savior, have you thought about your soul? something to think about and we all need to experience that 
changing of our soul. Uh, so I want to talk with you as uh, Dave shared with the, the scripture and it's really just feeding the multitudes. And so uh, Gypsy, Gypsy Smith tells of walking along the seashore with his father. Suddenly his father picked up a bottle, dipped it in the water and filled it to the brim. Then he threw the bottle far into the ocean and said, there, the ocean in the bottle and the bottle is in the ocean. So if Christ is in us and we are in Christ, we have a safe refuge for all time and eternity. Pretty awesome, isn't it? So we can go to the uh, multitudes. I wanted to take a few moments and talk about two, two subjects. The feeding of the multitudes and the fear of the disciples. It's all in this that uh, Dave read the first 10 verses and how I'm trying to uh, add a few more verses to that as we we talk uh, uh, this morning. And so first I would say that that Jesus Christ set the perfect example. He always does. He always will. And so, but we come to look on one of Christ's most important miracles, the feeding of about 20,000 people by turning five pieces of bread and two small fishes into an abundant supply of all. So I'm talking, you say, well, you, you misprint about 20,000 people. No, I think he said he'd, in here that uh, there were uh, 5,000 men that were uh, fed. So the women and children were also included in the feeding. It could have been as much as, as 20,000 people. And so the miracle is important because all four gospel writers tell us about it. It's important because it happened before such a large crowd of, of people. So Jesus and the disciples were worn out for many days of hard, hard labor. So they left the crowds and went across the sea and rested at a, an, oasis, an oasis in the desert. But they were destined not to be alone. Great multitudes followed them. There was no privacy uh, for them. It's a bad thing to be lonely, but it is a worse thing to have so many people following you that you can't have any private life of your own. This was true of Jesus at that time. He had performed so many miracles and done so many wonderful things that the crowd followed him wherever he went. But how, how did they look? How did they look upon, upon him? They saw only a wonderful magician who could work miracles, a clever physician who could heal the sick. They failed to perceive all that he was the savior of sinners and the son of God. They were blind to his divine glory. It's the same way today, my friends. Many people think of Jesus as a wonderful teacher or a beautiful example, but nothing else. Let me tell you that all of this means nothing to a man until he sees Christ as savior and experiences uh, that experience. Today, when the coming of a so-called faith healer is advertised, great, crowd, great crowds go out to see and hear him. They're eager to see a miracle. They're anxious to get physical relief for themselves or their loved ones, but few of them 
are looking for soul hearing. Amen. Soul hearing, okay? That's the soul that I read to you about. Have you really thought about your, your soul? So there is such a thing as soul healing. Yes. He started at Calvary. Okay, it ended at Calvary. Praise the Lord. One, one time Jesus went to the cross. He was crucified once. He was buried once. He arose once. And he sits at the right hand of God making intercession for us once and for all. Oh, yes. You know, I got to thinking about that a little bit, folks. From the time of his <clears throat> resurrection and his ascension into heaven to make intercession for the body of Christ, what's he going to do after the church is raptured we get a new body, we get a new soul, so to speak. Yes. And so what's going to be the ministry of Jesus Christ after the rapture of the church, after there's no more heartache, after there's no more sin, after there's total peace forever? You know, we can all have a little cabin in the corner of, of glory yes, land. And so I, I thought, wow, Jesus' ministry, as it is at this time, applied totally to the body of Christ, to the bride of Christ. Okay? So what do you think he's going to be doing? He's going to be teaching. He's going to be blessing. He's going to be lovely. He's going to be awesome. He's going to be perfect. He's going to show love to every one of, of, uh, of those that are part of the body of Christ. Yes. He's going to start with a big marriage supper of the Lamb. Yes. Okay? And we'll always be. He'll always be our Savior. He'll always be our Commander-in-Chief. He'll always be the leader that we, that we need. It, so rest assured, we're going to have a heck of a time Amen. in heaven. And he, Jesus Christ is going to be there. He'll be to our little cabin and talk to us. He'll be in a meeting where we're singing. And he'll sing with us. He has no limitation. You know, I'm anxious for, for that, that day to come. I want to hear Dave again play and sing, you know? I want to hear Leah uh, witness to a little child again. And, and so I was just thinking, we can't even think or understand. We have no, no total thought of, of what Jesus Christ in his ministry throughout eternity will be. I know the first thousand years, okay, will rule and reign with, with Jesus. But the church is the bride of Christ during the millennial reign. And so we'll rule and reign with him. Yes. Okay, so there'll be assignments, but we'll have the same leader every time we need another position, another job, another, uh, you know, all these things. They, we're going to be millions and millions in, in heaven. And we're all going to be in tune with our Lord and Savior, yeah. Jesus, Lord. Jesus Christ. So, as I, <clears throat> few are looking for soul healing. Few of them think of meeting Christ there. He's pushed into the background. Jesus looked up and saw a multitude of people coming. He knew 
They were hungry because he knows everything about everybody. You know, if, if you have a thousand followers or 5,000 followers or 10,000 followers in the, and you're getting tired in that, Jesus knew those people were going to be hungry. Okay? He was more concerned about it than the disciples because the disciples just said, we can't do anything uh, about it. I, I can just kind of see Jesus uh, kind of giving a little smile and says, we'll see. We'll see. Oh, boy. He turned to Philip and said, where can we get enough bread to feed all these? Now, Jesus knew what he was going to do, but he said this to test Philip. But Philip failed the test. Instead of looking up to Jesus and saying, Lord, you're the son of God. You can do everything. You turn the water into wine. You heal a man that had been sick. 38 years, surely you can provide bread for all these. What did he say? Lord, if we had 200 penny worth of bread and served very small slices, we wouldn't have enough for this crowd. He saw the crowd. He saw the difficulty. He looked at the problem and not at the Lord. Oh, don't you think there's a message there? Don't you think there's a, a lesson there? And you know what? I think we act the same way quite, quite often. God has unlimited resources. He declares that his grace is sufficient for all our needs. But what do we do when he, the need arises? We look at our own resources instead of looking, looking toward the Redeemer, looking to the supplier, looking to the able Lord Jesus Christ that can do uh, anything. And so uh, we knew that in times past, God cared for us and brought us out of many hard places. We knew that he promises to keep on doing that. Why do we rack our minds to find a solution to the problem of life? Why don't we just look to Jesus? I've got a little plaque over in my, my office and it shows three pictures, three smaller pictures of, of Jesus and, and the cross. And it says, have you talked to him about it? I see that every day. Some days I'm really convicted because I haven't done that. But as I'm 90 years old now and my focus is failing a little bit, but my heart is active. My heart is there. And so I, just praise the, Lord. Praise, yeah. praise the Lord. So uh, we still want to help us. He, Lord still wants to help us. Christians ought to learn the lesson of turning to God first in time of need. What is our feebleness compared to his power? What is our emptiness compared to his fullness? Now Andrew stepped up. He was Simon Peter's brother. We see him moving three times in the New Testament. Each time he's introducing someone to Jesus. What a man. He brought a boy up to the Savior and said, Jesus, here's a boy who has brought his lunch along with him. He has five barley loaves and two small fishes. But what are these among so many? It did look like a helpless situation. There were 5,000 men present beside women and children. Uh, when you add Jesus to what, what the, the boy had, there was plenty for everybody. God and one are always a majority. Are your needs great? and your resources small, then remember that God has an abundant store. Keep your eyes on him and be sure that you're on his side. He will see you through. One day, 
Somebody asked Abraham Lincoln this question. Is God on our side? And the great man answered, I'm not so much concerned about that, but I am concerned about this. Are we on God's side? Amen. That came from the mouth and the mind and the heart of one of the great presidents of in U.S. history, Abraham, Abraham uh, uh, Lincoln. Keep your eyes on him and be sure that you're on his side. Yes. So live for God and serve him with all your heart. Then when you need him, he will be right there. Now Jesus said, and I'm, there's a lot of verses I'm not repeating, but uh, Dave uh, shared those and it's all in the chapter six of the book of John. So uh, you may want to read, read some of that in your devotion over the next uh, few, few days. So Jesus said to the disciples, make them sit down. The people sat down by ranks, by hundreds and by fifties. When God had anything to, when God has anything to do with the situation, he always does it in an orderly way. He never uses slipshod methods. Paul was speaking about the work of the church when he said, let all things be done decently and in order. God wants us to do the things which create order and not confusion. When the people were seated, Jesus took the bread. The boy seemed perfectly willing to give it to him. When we're willing to give our best to Jesus, my, my friend, he will use it for his own glory and bless us in the giving. I couldn't be more serious about that particular uh, statement. Look at Jesus now. He was standing there with the bread in his hand. What was he going to do? He looked up to God and gave thanks for the food. That's something that we should be serious about uh, as well. When we offer thanks, it's not so much a matter of what we say as it is a matter of acknowledging our debt to God and for the food and giving him our thanks for it, okay? Then we note that he didn't give out the food directly to the people. He gave it to the disciples and they gave it to the, to the people. This must always be the way. This must always be the way. Before we can give out the gospel's blessing to others, we must get it from the Lord for ourselves. Amen. Okay? We're the f funnel. We're the bucket. Okay? We're, we're the storehouse of God's love. And what we need, he's going to be there to provide our need. And you're going to say, oh, I've asked God for things that he's never uh, provided for me or answered me. We have kind of forget that God has a will for us, has a way for us, has something for us. And if we can't yield to that, uh, I, I don't know what to tell you. But my point being, he's our, our resources, but we're our storehouse, his storehouse, okay? He never closes. It's always open, always light, never darkness, always bright, never shadowy. Yeah? That's what we... That's what we have. Yeah. Now it gets down to that toughy of applying all these, yeah. all these uh, things. So uh, there's a record of only one man who came to know Christ 
directly by revelation from God. That was Paul. On the road to Damascus, Christ appeared to him and spoke to him. But all of us receive the bread of life from some disciple of Christ. Someone spoke to us. Someone put a tract in our hand or someone quoted scripture to us. Someone preached or sang to us. Some mother or father taught us the way of life. God uses human instruct instruments empowered by the Holy Spirit to bring people to Christ. Amen. That's really his, his plan. I'll tell you, I want to just take a minute. When I was first saved over on the island of uh, Okinawa, I got involved with on the on the base and missionaries were there and I'd just been a Christian for a few months and and one of the the leaders in the Far East radio network asked me to share my my testimony. Well, I I knew it was going to be good because my knees had already started applauding. <laughs> and I, I thought, yes, I'll, I'll do that. I, I was just jittery and, and so he asked me a question. He had a mic, I had a mic, we had, they had all the equipment there and, and uh, I was just introduced as and uh, as an airman assigned to, to the base there on Okinawa, and that I had recently become a Christian and asked me to uh, give my testimony. Well, I did. I, I spoke, and I spoke, and I spoke. Pretty soon the fellow that was inter interviewing me went, <laughs> like, enough is enough. But I got excited. You know what? I thought, how many am I able to reach yes. in that whole Far East network? Mm -hmm. Well, someday I'll know. Yeah. Someday I'll know. But I think about that uh, every once in a while. Uh, I was all of uh, 21 years old <laughs> uh, when, when, that, when that happened, but I was asked to do it and I, I tested my faith, yes. okay? Yeah. And I feel like I really honored God and I, I, I just hope and, and pray that many people heard it and, and found uh, found the Lord as their, as their uh, Savior. So, uh, God has his riches of grace for every sinner. Folks, the more I study and talk about grace, amazing grace, I'm overcome. I mean, I think of what Paul said about it. I think about what John said about it. I think about what the psalmist said said about it and, and all, uh, all through the scripture, uh, all the epistles that uh, Paul wrote uh, expressed amazing, amazing uh, grace. And it is, it is so much there uh, for us. So, uh, so between the riches of Christ and the hungry people, there's a great gulf. You and I can bridge this chasm only by consecrated service and faithful witnessing. This is not the duty of preachers only. It's the duty of every child of God. We must pass on to others that which God has given us. If you're saved, you can't contain the joy of it. You will want to share your joy with others. What a tremendous responsibility we have 
to be a Christian. The people didn't just have a snack that day. They had a real feast. You know, God's not stingy. God is not stingy. Come to him and he'll give you not just a meager blessing, but a life and eternity full of blessings. Amen. Boy, what an invitation, huh? What's it costing you? Nothing. Nothing. Why? Because he paid it all. Amen. All to him we owe. Amen. You know, we sing that song. It's all, all to him we owe. Yeah. So what's wrong then was surrendering all that we, that we sing. Mm -hmm. Something to think about, huh? Something to, to think about. Well, uh, you note the Lord was not wasteful either. After the multitudes was filled, he told his disciples to gather up the fragments. When they did, they were 12 baskets full left over. Uh, think about that. Think about that. What a miracle. He took five little loaves and two little fishes, fed thousands of people with them, and had more at the end than he did at the beginning. Say, why? How? He's God. Amen. He can do everything. God loves you. He's got a heart of love. He's got a heart full of grace uh, uh, for you. I can just, I can just kind of picture J Jesus sitting there afterwards with his disciples and 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 just kind of smiling and say, well. I hope a lot of folks learn my lesson that I shared with them today. So, pretty special, isn't it? Yeah. Something that we can really uh, uh, apply. Uh, so, now God has given us a life to be used for Him. The fragments we need to watch are the fragments of our time. Gather up your misspent minutes your sluggish energies, your cold affections, your neglected duties. Gather them all up and use them for his glory. Maria gave us a great song. Yes. She also gave us a great message. Mm -hmm. She also brought her talents together to help people, see? That's a good example yeah. for what the message of uh, feeding the, the, the multitudes. That's better than 5,000 because I'm shortchanging the record. <laughs> okay, the multitudes. Okay, so it's just uh, 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 awesome. So it's kind of amazing and maybe a little amusing to hear the pitiful efforts when the moderates of today use to explain away this miracle. And I'm going to share that with you because the time is so critical. We have millions of people that are downgrading the Word of God. They, they don't believe in crossing the Red Sea. Okay, all oh, this was just just the wind and this was just uh, clouds came and all this. Well, who's controlling the crowd? The clouds, who's controlling the weather? Yes. Okay, he can, he can move a mountain. Why can't he move water out of the way to, to freeze people? Yes. He did, he did, why shouldn't he? Amen. But you know, you got these folks out there that uh, kind of, uh, uh, I'll share with you, a moderate, a moderist is one who doesn't believe in taking the Bible literally. He attributes all the miracles to natural causes. For in, in instance, when the Israelites came to the Red Sea, God drove the water back and nearly three million of his people passed over unharmed, unwet. They didn't even have mud on their sandals. Amen. Isn't that awesome? Like I said, God's complete. He does everything. 
he does everything uh, right. We believe that God did this, but the moderates say that the sea was very shallow at that point, and that a strong east wind drove the water back and let the people pass over. Well, as soon as the Israelites had passed over, the Egyptians rode into the sea and thousands of men and horses were drowned. See God's, God's timing? Yeah. Perfect timing, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay, save the Israelites by opening the Red Sea. Pretty, pretty, uh, pretty special. So this was an accommodating wind, wasn't it? To blow one way for the Israelites and another way for the Egyptians and just at the right minute. But God was controlling that wind. And when, if the water was so shallow, why were so many of Pharaoh's warriors drowned? God was in control. I feel sorry, folks, for people who don't have a God big enough to perform miracles. He performs miracles every every day. Okay? Here's the way some of the modernists explain the feeding of, of these thousands of people. These multitudes. These multitudes. Remember that word. They say that nearly everyone there had a lunch in his pocket. <laughs> Then when they saw the little boy sacrifice his lunch, and when they heard the warm words of Jesus, they were so moved that they took out of their lunches and cheered them so that everybody had plenty to eat. You know what? Hogwash. Amen. Amen. Hogwash. So this explanation would be amusing if it was not so tragic because what a blessing. What a blessing. Yes. We're talking about a live event mm -hmm. yes. that involved the miracles of Jesus Christ, the miracles of, of God. And so I don't know how I can enlarge on that. Uh, uh, so, uh, <clears throat> so I believe the people were hungry and they had nothing to eat. I believe that the great Lord of heaven multiplied the loaves and fishes until every man, woman, and child was satisfied. Now what was the result of this miracle upon the thinking of the people? Of a truth, they said. This must be the prophet that should come into the world. They had been taught that when the Messiah came, he would perform many miracles. So they said, this must be the man. But they don't read that many of them believed on him as, but we don't read that many of them believed on him as the son of God. Mm -hmm. I think there was a lot of conversions when Jesus began feeding the multitude. Yes. You know, just look at the people. They were having things to eat and the more they ate, the more was on their plate. Yes. I like that sometimes. Yes. <laughs> so anyway, folks, but uh, this was the man. This was the man. I do want to just share a little bit about the fear of the disciples. It says, they were literally swept off their feet. They looked upon Jesus as a hero. They were just about to rush upon him and make him a king, and the disciples joined right in with them. But Jesus knew their heart. He knew why they wanted him to be their king. They felt that he could feed them and they would not have to work. <laughs> Boy, that's an attitude of today, isn't it? Uh, and so, <clears throat> they wanted to get something for nothing. They were on his side that day, but if someone else had come along and offered them two chickens in every pot and two cars in every garage, 
they would have been quick to leave Jesus and follow this latest <clears throat> Moses to the promised land. You can always get a crowd by offering the people more than nothing than the next fellow offers. That's the reason communion, that's, excuse me, that's the reason communism spreading today. That's why we have people that are on welfare from the government. They want a handout, but they don't want to work out. And so it just boils down uh, uh, to, to that. The mob mistook the mission of Jesus. He didn't come to feed men's bodies, but to save their souls. Yes. Amen. We admit that men need food and that Christians ought to furnish this food, but our first obligation to men is to get them to Christ. All the food and clothing that you give a man will help him only temporarily. His supreme need is Jesus Christ. We see rescue missions. What do, what do they do? They try to reach people with, for Christ and then provide them food, food and raiment and that. The, the sign down on the mission, on the, is a, we need such and such. And then it, Jesus saves. You see, so both of these things are being fulfilled. Your soul is fed and your body is fed and you're on your way to heaven. The, the old pilgrim road to, to heaven. That's what we should be uh, helping uh, with. And so I need to move along. I've got... <clears throat> But I, I would just share with you that we learn from, the, from Jesus Christ himself and his amazing grace and his all power. And we learn something from the disciples, but I know the disciples learned something from that, that event is that look at the one that can provide your need as opposed to looking at the need and, and getting upset about it, okay? Let's talk to Jesus. Have you talked to Jesus about it? Have you talked to Jesus about it? Interesting. So, uh, so right now, Jesus is up in heaven praying for us. We're told that he intercedes for us, groanings that cannot be uttered. It's fine to have good Christian people praying for you, it's absolutely wonderful to know that Jesus is praying for us, for surely he has the ear of the Father. So, my friend, when troubles on earth come, you're going to need Jesus. When death comes, you're going to need Jesus. When you stand at the judgment, you're going to need Jesus. Won't you take him today and give him your best? If you do, he'll give you his best. Amen. So that's really a lesson, I believe, of faith, commitment, responsibility. It just goes on and on. Yes. As a, and I've preached on this uh, before, but these things have come out of the Lord telling me a little bit more mm -hmm. to discuss about, about this. Remember we did 30-some lessons on the miracles of, of Jesus some, some few years, years back. But sometimes they need to be repeated and reread because yeah. it's alive and there's always something more that we, we, can, we can learn. So it's all about Jesus and others, isn't it, folks? Yeah. It's all about Jesus and others. So my friends out in YouTube land, hey, God loves you. Think about what he did, feeding the multitudes and so many, so much food left over. Wonder what he did with that food. You know what I think he did? He took it down to the Salvation Army, so to speak. 
okay? He yeah. took it down where people needed it, right. didn't throw anything away. People were excited. Uh, 12 loaves, 12 uh, barrels, right? Yeah. Bushels, I was trying to get to. I was, it was so big I couldn't even think of the word it was. But anyway, my, it's all about Jesus and others. Yeah. And he said, well, if it's all about Jesus, what was it? it's all about the promise of eternal life if you accept him as your Lord and Savior and ask him to, to forgive you of your, your sins. And so that's all about Jesus. He does it all. All to him we owe. I've talked other weeks about getting rid of this work for your salvation stuff, but I'll probably refer to it more in some messages uh, future, but anyway, you need Jesus. He's here for us. He's right here in spirit through the Holy Spirit, but he's sitting at the right hand of God making intercession for us. What does that mean? He wants you to be part of the body of Christ. He wants you to be part of the bride of Christ. What an invitation. Eternity forever with Jesus. Wow. Well, I'm ready. Come on, Lord. And, and so let's, let's just pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your precious word. We don't have to look to the modernist we look to the Savior. We don't have to look to an encyclopedia. We look to the Bible. Yeah. We don't have to pay our way. Jesus has already paid the price. He actually has a ticket in our name. Isn't that awesome? And so it's a simple prayer, folks. Jesus, I'm a Savior. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Forgive me of my sins and come in and be my savior. And we know you will. And so I extend this invitation to each one that's listening or watching. And God is there for you. God loves you. And you'll be blessed with his amazing grace. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, my friends, in YouTube land, love to hear from you. Just Valley View Baptist Church, Post Office Box 12653, Ogden, Utah, 84412. Love to hear from you. Remember, God loves you, and uh, God bless. Find a good church. Find, find a place that you can grow in Christ and honor Christ with your, with your life. Thank you. God bless you. Have a good day.